Hi, this is John from Sound Devices. What we've got here is our new PIC series of video recorders. What these tools do is they record HDMI and HDSDI audio or video inputs and record that to Compact Flash or to removable SSD drives. And we record Apple ProRes or Avid DNX HD formatted files. The, uh, the PIX240 and the PIX220, the 220 is its baby brother, which does not have the uh, STI input. It just has HDMI input. Uh, these will record, and it's probably best to see our menus here. So we'll go into the video menu here, and we can select our codec from a variety of different rates. So we can go from a proxy file up to a 220 megabit, 10 bit uh, HQ file. The, uh, all right, so we'll go back here. So the unit has a, uh, a screen. These are pre-production screens. These are 4.3 inch screens. The uh, production units have a five inch screen. They're 800 pixel by 480 pixel screens. And the device right now, since I don't have a drive in it, let's pop in or, again to Compact Flash or to SSD. And this is the Drive Caddy which gives you USB 3, USB 2, eSATA, or FireWire 800 access to the files stored onto the SSD drive. So we'll insert the drive into the machine. The unit will come online, and so then we'll be able to record. So now we've got a nice big, uh, no media presence, still, uh, still checking in here. You know what, I may be selected to record a media that is not in existence here. So. Uh, selected record a CF, which it doesn't have, so now we go to SSD, and so now we dump in a record, and so now we're recording our files. So we'll, again, we'll take the, uh, the video stream, there's hardware scalers on board, so we can come in at uh, 720p, or we can come in at 1080i, and we can record to a 720p, and we can also take a 1080i signal that the camera is generating a 24p cadence, and record a 24p file from that 1080i signal as well. So it has hardware scalers for both the 220 and the 240. The unit's powered from external DC or from removable Sony L-mount camcorder type batteries. When the unit is powered down and you have DC connected, that operates as a charger, and so you're charging the, the batteries. I obviously see a fan unit on the back of it. Is, is it fairly loud, or what are we talking about in terms of onset workflow? Well, Sound Devices is an audio company. We're very conscious of, of uh, that. and uh, So it's an extremely quiet, very low impedance fan. Just enough current to just wick a little bit of heat off of this heat sink. And it's a fully sealed device. And if the fan fails, it's a very simple thing, because lots of times you might have some kind of something uh, protruding and going into the fan and, and, uh, and damaging it. So you can very quickly swap out the fan if you need to. Uh, there's no access to the internals of the unit with uh, the fan, so it's just to the heat sink itself. So what price point are we looking? You said there's two models. One is the 220, one is the 240. Does the 240 have everything the 220 has? The 240 has everything the 220 has. The price point for the 220, which is, the, again, the HDMI-only unit, that is uh, $1,700. The 240, which includes a full timecode circuitry, so it has a 5-pin LIMO, for time code input and output, so you can output LTC on the LIMO. You have uh, full GenLock output on a BNC. You've got word clock selectable uh, instead of the GenLock if you need that. So if you're in a stereo application or if you're in a multi-camera or a double system sound application, the, the PIX240, which is $2,800, is going to be the most flexible piece for you. Well, we've got a heritage in uh, production sound. and. Sound is, has been in a file-based world for quite a while. And with our 7 Series recorders with, that record to Compact Flash and to hard drive, we're familiar with that workflow. And with the requirements of metadata and all of those additional pieces of information, uh, adding video to it you know, required us to obviously up the bandwidth of, the, of our recorders and to add different kinds of inputs. But really, it's, uh, it's a different kind of a signal that sort of just another kind of codec for us. And so it's a natural extension for us to, to add the video component to it. And we certainly see that convergence at the show here. So you mentioned uh, Avid Pro, uh, Final Cut ProRes. You mentioned uh, Avid DNX HD. Is there uncompressed, for example? There's no uncompressed. So it's a, it's a 422 input, 10-bit. Uh, That's Our maximum rate is 220 megabits on both the DNX HD and for the ProRes. 
So what about the uh, drive system? So I see a solid state drive. Is that proprietary, that casing, or can someone just buy an off-the-shelf SSD drive and make this thing run? You can certainly buy an off-the-shelf SSD drive and connect it to the, to the caddy here. We'll stop recording before we pull the drive. And so this caddy, which is uh, just mounts to the drive here, so this is a commercially available uh, high-speed SSD. And so we'll have a list of drives that will have qualified that will be appropriate for application and we'll say these are the drives. Uh, we'll offer one of them in our product line and then customers can certainly choose different capacities and vendors as they need it. So is that casing right now, what part of that is you and what part of that is the off-the-shelf SSD drive? That can you just pull it apart? Yeah. This caddy here, this component on the end here, this is, uh, this is our accessory. So this interface that connects from the SATA connection through to this eSATA port, and the connection from the device is over SATA. This interface here is ours. It also gives you, like I said, the USB 3, USB 2, and the FireWire 800 connectivity as well. And how, e how easy is it to actually dismantle, like swap SSD drives if you just wanted to buy one of the end unit and multiple SSD drives, or do you have to buy basically multiple of these? You certainly don't have to purchase multiple caddies. It's more convenient. They're about $100 oh, okay. per caddy. But uh, you can certainly remove two screws, mount a new drive, and off you go.